Hello everybody and welcome back to the Lost Planeswalker. You're here with me, Jesse, the Lost Planeswalker. This week, I'm going to talk about one of my favorite keywords, Sacrifice. Sacrifice is a very interesting evergreen keyword action that can be used to help you and against your opponents. Sacrifice has been around all the way from Alpha, but wasn't given a keyword until revised. How does Sacrifice work though? According to Rule 701.17a, to sacrifice a permanent, its controller moves it from the battlefield directly to its owner's graveyard. A player can't sacrifice something that isn't a permanent, or something that is a permanent that they don't control. Sacrificing a permanent doesn't destroy it, so regeneration or other effects that replace destruction can't affect this action. Sacrifice, similar to Exile, has very few ways to counter its effect. Creatures that are going to be sacrificed have no protection, even if they have indestructible. Cards like Killing Wave have you either choose to lose your creature or lose your life. This is an underplayed card that is a non-typical board wipe, so you can also synergize with your opponent's losing creatures. Sacrifice is commonly used in Aristocrats decks that take advantage of sacrifice sacrificing creatures. The best colors for sacrifice are black, red, and white. Black and red are Rakdos colors, and they are a guild on Ravnica that deal with sacrificing creatures. The first commander deck I built myself was a Rakdos deck, Lazolda the Blood Witch. Using her ability, you can either gain card advantage, or deal damage, or both. Rakdos is all about making lots of creatures to sack to put yourself ahead. Cards like Heartstone also make her ability even better. Let's look at some sacrifice cards you should be playing. Every good sacrifice deck needs a number of sacrifice outlets to make sure you're able to get the value from your creatures. Viscera Seer and Carrion Feeder are two of the most common sack outlet cards. You can use Viscera Seer's ability to scry cards and Carrion Feeder to get larger and become a big threat. Yeheni, Undying Partisan, also gets bigger every time a creature your opponents control die. You can sack a creature to give him indestructible to protect him from kill spells and board wipes. A Yira, First of Lockthwain, Razakath the Foulblooded, and Priest of the Forgotten Gods all have you sack creatures to draw cards. Black and Red have a hard time drawing cards, and it often comes at a price. You can generate massive card advantage this way. By sacking creatures, you can generate massive card draw. The last and best two sack outlets in my opinion are Ashnod's Altar and Phyrexian Altar. These let you turn your creatures into mana that can be used to cast even bigger spells. In every sacrifice deck, you also need some token generators to give you plenty of things to sacrifice. Pawn of Ulamog, Gerard, Ghoul Caller of Nephilia, and Edric Sar, Master Breeder, all are great at token generation. You can create Eldrazi Spawn with Pawn of Ulamog that you can use as sack outlets or sack themselves for mana. Jadar has you make a zombie with decay at the end of each end step. You can use this each turn to get value. Edric Sar has you making one or more thrall creatures whenever you cast big spells. Let's now look at what we can do with these tokens to gain even more advantage. Deadly Dispute, Diabolic Intent, and Village Rites has you sacking creatures to gain card advantage. You can turn your tokens and low-cost spells into great value. You can also sack creatures with Victimize and Dread Return to pull your creatures back from the graveyard. These spells provide you with a lot of flexibility and ways to put yourself ahead. One of the ways you can put your opponents behind is by making them sack their own creatures. Plague Crafter, Fleshbag Marauder, and Demon's Disciple are all cards that have you and your opponents sack creatures when they enter the battlefield. Plague Crafter goes a step above, because if you can't sack a creature, then you have to discard a card from your hand. Soul Shatter is another cool card that has your opponents sack their own creatures with the highest converted mana cost. There are some really powerful enchantments used in sacrifice decks to keep your opponents from getting ahead of you. Grave Pact and Dictate of Erebos are both really powerful enchantments that have your opponents sack a creature every time one of yours dies. Dictate of Erebos also has Flash, so you can play it right before a bunch of your creatures die and wipe everybody else's board too. Goblin Bombardment is a really fun enchantment that lets you sack creatures for damage. If it's late in the game and everyone's life totals are low, you can sack your creatures to knock out your opponents. While you'll be sacrificing a lot of creatures, you'll want a way to retrieve them from your graveyard as well. Animate Dead and Necromancy are both aura enchantments that can bring creatures back from your graveyard to the battlefield. Shalordred, the Whispering One, is a powerful creature that has your opponent sacking creatures and you returning them at every upkeep. Rakdos is an amazing color for sacrifice sex, and here are some of my favorite cards to use. Lizolda the Blood Witch and Jury, Master of the Review, both benefit when a creature is sacrificed. Judith, the Scourge Priest, and Mayhem Devil deal damage whenever a creature dies or is sacrificed. Two new additions to the Rakdos sack theme are Lagamos, Hand of Hatred, and Mahadi, Emporium Master. Lagamos creates creatures that attack, and if five or more die that turn, you can tutor a card from your library. And Mahadi creates a treasure token for each creature that died on your turn. These are both very cool cards, and I can't wait to add them to my decks. 
Now, let's move on to some cool ways to end the game through sacrifice. Torment of Hailfire is a very powerful card that has your opponent sacking non-land permanents or discarding cards to keep themselves from dying. A great card to pair with this is Terror Grid, God of Fright. Pairing these cards, you can steal so many of your permanents from your opponents and create an unstoppable board state. You can also pair Terror Grid with enchantments that we talked about earlier, like Grave Pact and Dictate of Erebos. With a sack outlet, you can steal your opponent's entire boards. Now that I have thoroughly gone through some great sack cards, I wanted to talk about some sacrifice cards that are good for every game. Commander's Fear, Burnished Heart, and Wayfarer's Bobble are all great cards that can have you sacrifice to get value. There are so many cards that synergize with Artifact Sacrifice that this would be a really fun strategy to build around. There are also lots of lands that get sacrificed for great value. Myriad Landscape, Fabled Passage, and Evolving Wilds have you sacrifice them to help with mana fixing. If you have a little more money, you can spend Bloodstained Mire, Misty Rainforest, and Verdant Catacombs gives you better lands that don't enter the battlefield tap. This little difference can really affect the outcome of the game. If you have ever played against a sacrifice deck, you know how frustrating it can be. Well, I did say there weren't many cards that could counter sacrifice, here are a few that do. Sigarda, Host of Herons, and Tajiru, Preserver, protects your board by negating the effects of sacrifice. This can completely shut down a sacrifice deck and put you in a good position to win. Angel of Jubilation and Yasharn, Implacable Earth, makes it so your opponents can't sacrifice creatures to gain anything. This completely shuts down sacrifice decks, making them pretty worthless to play. While these cards are strong, you can only include a few of them in your deck, making it hard to draw them. Sacrifice is a really cool and interesting game mechanic with a large history of cards. There are plenty of cards in all colors to create sacrifice decks out of. If there are any cool sacrifice cards I didn't include, please leave them in the comments below. I may just call them out like I do this one. I received from Sordio, who brought up a really cool fight card from my fight back to the basics video. Dissension in the ranks has two target blocking creatures fight each other. This is a really cool effect because you can cast it at instant speed and have two large blocking creatures fight each other and maybe even get destroyed before combat can occur. Thank you for the suggestion. That's a really cool card. If you enjoyed, I would really appreciate it if you would leave a like and subscribe. I post these Back to the Basics videos every Monday and have many more to work on. I hope you enjoy and have a great day. And as always, I'll see you later, Planeswalkers.